Hello and welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. We explain the procedures of the zones of special operations, the corporate social responsibility in action, these and so much more. Stay with us. Nikki baby, come here. You understand, so I have to send your guy your auntie so you can go to school and turn out better than me. Anyone you know has been a victim of human trafficking, call 811 or 1 888 Protect. Be wise, open your eyes, spot them, stop them. A message brought to you by the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh, and this is your GIS News for Thursday, September 7th. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is making contact with his colleague Prime Ministers across the Caribbean who have been affected by Hurricane Irma. The Category 5 hurricane has reportedly claimed nine lives and caused extensive damage on several islands, including Antigua and Barbuda, Anguilla, the British Virgin Islands, and St. Martin. In expressing his concern, Mr. Holness says Jamaica is assessing to determine what assistance can be offered to the country's Caribbean neighbors. A statement from Jamaica House reveals that the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SIDEMA, has its first responders on standby, subject to requests from national offices in the affected islands. In the meantime, the Foreign Affairs Ministry says it has and will continue to make inquiries to determine the welfare of Jamaicans on the affected islands. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has convened the first meeting of the Social Intervention Committee, which will play a vital role in the execution of the Mount Salem Zone of Special Operations. The meeting was called on Tuesday at the Office of the Prime Minister, with the leadership and representatives of the various ministries, departments and agencies that will constitute the committee. Prime Minister Holness urged them to focus on community and peace-building initiatives. The establishment of the committee follows the Prime Minister's announcement of Mount Salem as the first zone of special operations on Friday, September 1. The Prime Minister says social intervention initiatives have already started in the St. James community with the establishment of a special back-to-school fund. The next intervention will be a community services fair to be spearheaded by the Social Intervention Committee this weekend. Managing Director of the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, Omar Sweeney, is Deputy Chair of the Committee. Other members will be confirmed in short order. Minister of National Security Robert Montague is once again urging the Police Services Commission to promote the hard-working men and women of the Jamaica Constabulary Force once vacancies and funding are available. Pointing to the demotivation and demoralization facing some members of the force, Minister Montague says deserving personnel should be duly rewarded. In making the call, the minister reveals that there are currently more than 180 available vacancies, including positions as Inspector, Superintendent, Assistant Commissioner of Police, and Deputy Commissioner of Police. Minister Montague is also charging Police Commissioner George Coelho to update and upgrade the promotions policy to make it more transparent, merit-based, and easily understood. Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed has officially opened a new 24-unit sanitation facility at the Mona Heights Primary School. The units were recently constructed at a cost of approximately $5 million. The ministry provided $4 million while parents contributed the remainder. At the recent opening, Senator Reed says his ministry would continue to provide more resources for the school. So we continue to invest um, into this institution to make it indeed a very, very first world um, institution. I'm looking forward to improving the infrastructure, uh, bringing in more information, communication technology. Make sure you're properly wired and you have the latest technology in your classrooms and making sure that the school can transition to what we call a school management system. And finally, Culture Minister Olivia Grange says there are plans for the establishment of Miss Lou Square in Gordon Town, St. Andrew. 
The square is being established as a Jamaica 55 legacy project by the Culture Ministry in association with Miss Lou's Estate, the Gordon Town Community Council, the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation, and the Jamaica 55 Steering Committee in Canada. In her message to mark the 90th anniversary of the birth of the cultural icon today, Minister Grange says the Public Investment Management Secretariat has approved the project. A lasting tribute to the Honorable Louise Bennett Coverley. The centerpiece of Miss Lou Square will be a statue of the cultural icon to be completed in time for her 100th birthday. Other activities commemorating Miss Lou's birth included a floral tribute at her grave at the National Heroes Park this morning. A Tenki Miss Lou concert is planned for the Louise Bennett Garden Theatre in St. Andrew this evening. And throughout the month, the cultural icon's rich and diverse catalogue of work will be displayed through a series of activities across the island. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information is committed to ensuring that every Jamaican child has the best learning environment to thrive and needs your cooperation to make the education system work successfully. That is why we are ensuring that all Jamaicans have full access to secondary education. Tuition is free of cost to you, but the government can't pay for everything, so do continue with your voluntary contributions. These contributions cover the expenses of co-curricular and sports activities and school development projects. We have also increased our support for PATH students. That's right, PATH students are not expected to make contributions and they will be provided with five days of free lunches. We know that a hungry child cannot learn. The Ministry has implemented a literature book rental program, free insurance and IDs for PATH students in high schools. This government cares for you. We believe that every child can learn. Every child must learn. The first zone of special operation was declared in Mount Salem, St. James on September 1. The operation has been going according to the book with the implementation of social intervention programs. But what exactly is a zone of special operation? Get the details next. <laughs> To tackle crime requires a national effort, engaging all groups, interests, and communities. All hands must be on deck. And so government has moved to streamline these efforts with the passage of the Law Reform, Zones of Special Operations, Special Security, and Community Development Measures Act 2017. The law seeks to cauterize crime promote community development through social intervention programs, all while respecting the human rights and fundamental freedoms of citizens. Here's how it works. The Act allows the Prime Minister, acting on the advice of the National Security Council, to declare any high crime area of the island a zone for special security operations and community development measures. The National Security Council comprises the Prime Minister, the Ministers of National Security, Justice, Finance and Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, as well as the Attorney General. The Chief of Defence Staff, the Commissioner of Police and the National Security Advisor are also part of the Council. The bill says that you have to select areas where it is evident that there is a crime problem. It is not just left up to the Prime Minister's whims and fancy. The, in the law, there are parameters. Once declared, a zone operates for a period not exceeding 60 days. But the Prime Minister, on the advice of the Security Council, may seek an extension of another 60 days from the House of Representatives. 14 days after the declaration of a zone and each extension, the Prime Minister will make a statement to Parliament. And the head of government in Council may at any time make an order revoking a zone. Once a zone of special operation is in effect, a joint command will be established with a major of the Jamaica Defence Force and a superintendent of police of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. There's a requirement in the law for them to have received human rights training. There's a requirement for the, the teams working in the zone, the joint force, to receive that kind of training. 
A cadre of officers will also receive human rights, use of force and community building training to carry out duties in the zone. Every zone will have an accountability framework, reporting daily to the National Security Council and submitting a written report every 10 days. If for any reason things were to go opposite to what we expect, we would immediately be, be able to rein in, call it off, shut it down, take corrective actions. Cordon and search operations by the security forces can last no more than a day and curfews should not exceed three days. When searches of homes or vehicles are being conducted, the owner, occupier or person in possession must be able to observe the process. In addition, only female security officers may search a female citizen. No tool of lawful trade can be seized, and if items are seized, the owner or person in possession must be given a receipt. And in the case of detention, only the person in charge of the zone can give such orders. After being satisfied, there are reasonable grounds to do so. The philosophy of the Act mm -hmm. uh, is clear that this is not targeting a community, it's targeting criminals who are holding communities to ransom. If detained or arrested, the person must be told the reason for the detention and arrest. He or she must be brought before a justice of the peace who will determine whether or not there is reasonable grounds for the arrest or detention. If the JP disagrees, the man must be released. If the JP agrees, within 24 hours, that person must be taken before a parish judge so that the parish judge can decide whether or not to grant bail or to release that person. A mobile justice unit will also be stationed in the zone to ensure that persons' rights and freedoms are guaranteed. The establishment of the zone, therefore, is never about derogating, taking away, or abrogating the rights of the citizens. It is about protecting, preserving, and extending the rights of the law-abiding citizens of this country. So this is not merely a security operation. This is more a development operation. This government believes that the citizen must come first, that the dignity of the citizen must be upheld. Communities ultimately will go back to elevated crime levels if we do not restore community leadership and organization, provide basic needs, improve infrastructure, and provide education and training and attachment for the young people. So a social intervention committee will be operational within five days of the security forces holding the zone. The committee will conduct needs assessment in the zone, following which a sustainable development plan for the community will be formulated. The committee will comprise the Prime Minister or his nominee and at least 10 persons, including representatives of the Joint Security Command, ministries, social agencies, the Mayor, the Custos, Member of Parliament, Councillor, the Church and other groups. I am confident that the zones of special operations legislation will lead to a reduction in crime and violence. When criminals disagree, they seek revenge. Murder, arson, rape, whatever causes terrible suffering. It doesn't matter who gets hurt. Women, children, and the elderly, they are the main targets. Don't support the criminals. Don't cover up for them. Don't take their money. Take a stand now for the right of our women and children to be free from fear and abuse. Silence brings violence. A message from the Ministry of National Security. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, available online. JIS is everywhere. Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, who will repay him for his deed. Some poignant words of scripture. The Urban Development Corporation shared its generosity with the Marie Atkins Night Shelter for the Homeless recently.
Making development happen is not just a tagline for the Urban Development Corporation, UDC. It's a mandate they operate by. And developments undertaken by the UDC are not always on a national level to build out infrastructures, but also seeing to the social upliftment of people. Development is no development unless human beings are developed and taken care of. Any infrastructure development or physical development is, uh, is, is irrelevant unless the people benefit from it. So earlier in 2017, the UDC staff and management visited the Marie Atkins Night Shelter for the Homeless and carried out much needed improvement to the facility. This marked the start of the corporation's corporate social responsibility program at that facility. Over 300 people come and rest in the area that is behind me. What we've done, we've painted it, we've cleaned it up, we've done some refurbishing to make them a little bit more comfortable. To my left and behind, the bathroom facilities that are here, we've improved them, make sure that they are comfortable. The painting of the tables that they use, the flooring, it was redone. The bathrooms were pipes were put in. They also painted the bathroom. They are not, they're fixing windows around the front. There's a staircase that goes up to the mail department. They are there fixing it. So they are doing a lot which we are very grateful for. The Marie Atkins Night Shelter is named after the former mayor of Kingston and St. Andrew, the late Marie Atkins. Established 23 years ago, the facility is a refuge for displaced and dispossessed persons. Located at 65 Hanover Street in downtown Kingston, it falls under the Poor Relief Department of the KSAC. I had an opportunity to speak to the matron and uh, she is so happy for the, the effort and the work and how it has benefited those persons who make use of the facility. She, words it appears, was not adequate to express her joy. We have determined that we will not leave the Marie Atkins shelter alone and that we are going to mobilize our staff and ourselves to continue to assist and to improve the place. Already we've identified that they have some challenges with the roofing. A project charter is currently being developed and work will begin in 2017 to improve the facility through painting, tiling, roof works and termite treatment. We also are going to look at, where possible, um, additional space that can be built to house more persons that are at risk and also working with the KSAC to identify um, other opportunities for taking care of those who are at risk and the mentally, mentally ill and homeless. The Urban Development Corporation strongly believes that people are very important to the redevelopment of downtown Kingston. And by improving their social capacity, it will enable them to better partake or appreciate the developments as they happen. The UDC also took time out to enjoy the work day, a face-off between the singer and the dancers. One hop this time, one hop this time, right foot two stumps, left foot two stumps, slide to the left. Strangest feeling I'm feeling, but Jalo, we will always believe in. Till I'm laid to rest, yes, always been depressed, there's no life in the West, so I know the East is the best. The Urban Development Corporation, enabling social development in downtown Kingston. To learn more about the work of the Urban Development Corporation, call 656-8031 or visit their website at www.udcja.com. You may also follow them on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram or visit their information center on the ground floor Kingston Mall, downtown Kingston. 
Jamaica Comes Alive for Jamaica 55. The Jamaica Information Service is inviting primary, secondary, and tertiary students to catch the vibes and join in the celebration by participating in this year's staging of the JIS Heritage Competition. Primary and prep school children, ages 9 to 12, enter the essay competition and tell us how you would want to see Jamaica in 55 years. High schoolers, enter the poster competition. Show us your artistic interpretations of Jamaica throughout her 55 years in a poster titled Jamaica 55. 55. Posters may be designed digitally or illustrated. Zoom, click, snap. Yes, tertiary students, the photo competition is back. Capture an image that best represents Jamaica 55. For more information on the competition rules and how to submit entries, visit the JIS website at www.jis.gov.jm. You may also send an email to heritageessa at jis.gov.jm, heritageposter at jis.gov.jm, or heritagephoto at jis.gov.jm, or call us at 926-3590-4. The deadline for all entries is October 31, 2017. So ready, set, go for prizes galore. JIS Heritage Heritage Competition 2017, celebrating Jamaica 55. This long time you have never seen you. You're just walking up and down huh? like my auntie Rachel said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. by your mouth, the girl tree. You make your fool so lies, I pray down to yourself. <laughs> I've learned that people will forget what you have said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Miss Lou made us feel happy, proud, to be who we are. When you talking to me, talking to me, I'm in possession of your mind. <laughs> A wheel ride through the gate, you see, man, and all the call, them call. I wouldn't look. I don't business in them cascas. For my life is open book. Oh. On October 20, 2016, 10 years after her death in 2006, Jamaica's queen of social commentary peppered with laughter is again allowing us an unfettered view into her life. Documents she donated to the National Library of Jamaica upon her migration to Toronto, Canada in the latter years of her life have been archived and officially launched for public consumption. Memories are essential to our humanity. And as human beings, we have an innate need to remember the past. We must record our stories and we must preserve and protect our heritage and our history. With the archives now at the National Library, it will facilitate keeping the memories of Miss Lou alive and that we do not forget what she did and how she did it. Louise Bennett was a profoundly influential figure in the development of Jamaican self-confidence. She taught us to value the creation of our people, to accept our ways of expression, to celebrate our unique Jamaican swag and spirit, and to be confident in who we are. Therefore, Miss Lou will not and cannot be confined to our glorious past. She is still very relevant today. Thank you. Through this new resource, Miss Lou Archives, we get a glimpse into the life of this Jamaican cultural icon as we have never, ever seen before. The Miss Lou Archives presents the personal collection of unpublished material, including photographs, recordings, diaries, letters, and drafts in her own handwriting and other artifacts. It adds to the vast trove of works by Jamaicans and about Jamaica, which is housed here at the National Library of Jamaica. As of today, persons researching the evolution of Jamaican literature Jamaican language, Jamaican theatre, folklore, and the life of the Honourable Louise Bennett Coverley herself will not have done thorough enough research unless they consult these archives. 
So much was donated that the newly unveiled catalog represents only about 80% of what is available. Much more is still to be catalogued from the personal papers of Miss Lou's husband, Eric Coverley, who was himself a theater legend. Today, not only are we celebrating Miss Lou, but we are celebrating Eric Coverley. We have to recognize the part that he has played. He also was an extremely creative individual. The Miss Lou and Eric Coverley archives is located in the Special Collections Department of the National Library. The collection is organized into 10 main series, which are further divided into other subseries. You will be able to access it online. However, to view the documents, you will need to come to the National Library of Jamaica. Clients can consult the archive, you can make notes, but when, when you must acknowledge where you got the information from. In order for you to get copies to, do, to use in a publication or any other form of reproduction, you must contact Ms. Lou's estate. Ms. Lou was selfless and operated in the premise that she would not hide her talent under a bushel but to share it not only with her fellow Jamaicans, but persons all over the world. She was Jamaica. We didn't think she would be going anywhere. As a matter of fact, you thought she would be with you forever. And in the, in the form of her papers, she is with us forever. I wish not for preeminence, nor grand prize in a lottery, but power to express my whims and thoughts in poetry. Just walking up and down like my aunt you to say, keep by your mouth the girl tree. You make your fool so lies a pride out yourself. <laughs> Dropping a bottle on the ground. So how that concern you, boss? Because this is my country too. And when you litter, it affects the environment that affects me and you too. Keep your garbage to yourself. Don't share it with us. We don't want it. Put it in the bin so that others don't have to. Nobody wants garbage lying around, polluting the environment and taking away from Jamaica's natural beauty. We have a responsibility to keep the environment clean for this and the future generations. Cleanliness is next to godliness. That's all the time we have for you today, but another program comes your way tomorrow. Until then, just click on our website, jrs.gov.jm, to stay connected. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jrs.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.